graph an absolute value function. Here we have the parent function y is equal to the absolute value of x. Recall that this function starts at the origin, and from here we rise 1 over 1. So to review that, let's think about the function. There's no value being added or subtracted either on the inside or outside of the function or of the absolute value symbols. Therefore, it does not shift either up, down, left, or right. And no number, visible number, is in front of the absolute value. Therefore, the value we think of as a slope is 1. It's an invisible one, so from here we rise 1 over 1. Okay, let's get into some functions where we have to shift to the, shift to the left, to the right, up or down. And sometimes even flip it upside down. Oh, speaking of flipping it upside down. Here, we have a function that starts at the origin because no value is being added, subtracted, either on the inside or outside, so it's not moving left, right, up, down. However, this negative on the outs outside that you can think of again as your slope, a negative one, tells us to rise negative one, meaning down one, and run one, meaning right one. So notice the function, the shape of the B, of a V, moves upside down. Now we have y is equal to negative 3 times the absolute value of x. Again, we start at the origin, since no values are being added or subtracted anywhere. And that negative 3 tells us to rise negative 3, meaning down 3, and run 1. Now we have a minus 6 on the outside. If you recall from our exploration activity, subtracting outside of the absolute value shifts the function downward. So we shift down 6 units, and from here, our slope, if you will, is 1. Therefore, we rise 1 over 1. Now notice this 5 is on the inside. Because it's positive, we can, for now, just think of it as being our slope. We'll come back to discussing what happens when it's a negative, and I'll quickly mention it now. Is we simply, if there's a negative right in here, we would think of it as still being a positive in terms of it being a slope because the absolute value will cancel that negative value. Anyway, let's go ahead and start at zero, and from here we will rise one, two, three, four, five units and run one. Okay, glad this example came up because it has a negative on the inside of the absolute value with the value that's a coefficient of x. So let's start with this negative 7 though. This negative 7, or minus 7 rather, tells us to shift downward 7 units. That is our starting point, our vertex. Now from here, you might think that the negative 2 inside, which we were thinking of, of as a slope, would tell us to go down 2, right 1, but because it's inside the absolute value, the negative actually turns into a positive, so we're going to rise 2 and run 1 in this case. Now, I'm glad this example came up immediately after the previous. Here, we start at a positive 8, a plus 8 on the outside, meaning we shift up 8 units. So, notice the negative 2 is now outside. This negative will stay with the value, so we actually think of it as rising negative 2. In other words, down 1, 2 units and running one, one to the right. Okay, let's skip forward a bit. Let's try to find some problems. Yes, just like this one. We haven't done any of these yet. If we have subtraction, addition on the inside of the absolute value, remember that's shifting either left or right. In this case, subtracting on the inside is shifting to the right. Again, it's counterintuitive when dealing with the left or right. In this case, minus 3 will move us to the right 3 units, and then from there, we're going to rise 1 over 1 because the invisible number out in the front here is a 1, rise 1 over 1. Let's go ahead and take this graph here that has two steps to it. We're moving up 3 units and also right 5 units. Again, think of the inside counterintuitively as the opposite, move to the right, not left just because it's negative. So we're moving up three units from the origin, one, two, three. 
and then five units to the right. One, two, three, four, five. So this is our vertex point where this is our, the x value is positive five and the y value of that vertex is positive three. It's the ordered pair five, three. Now the slope, again, if you will, is one. We go one unit upward and one unit to the right and that would be our graph. I'm going to skip over to some of the problems that are a little bit more complicated. So let's take a look at this one. It has three steps to it. Let's start with the vertex. So here we're moving eight units upward and two units to the right. So eight units upward, two units to the right. Or if, again, you want to think of this as x and y, the x value would be positive two, opposite of what you see, so positive two. And then the y value is what you see, which is eight. So it's the ordered pair two, eight. Now from here, our slope is negative four. So from this point, we're going to rise negative four, meaning go down one, two, three, four units, and one to the right. We will skip yet again to another type of problem. In the challenge, sec challenge section, you'll notice there are some problems in which we have to factor. So let me skip over a little more, see if we can find one of these problems where we need to factor. Notice I'm skipping back and forth between problems to find one, here it is. So now you have to think of um, factoring in this case because we have a three and a three. Both of these can be divided by three. So if you picture this here, let's go ahead and type it over here. So I'm going to type it in another program. We had three, a minus three, and this was a minus five at the end. If we rewrite this function, okay, factoring out the three, what we are going to do is get rid of the three there in other words, divide it by three, leaving us with an invisible one, divide by three here, which turns it into one, and therefore this three comes on the outside. So now this is what we are graphing. To start, we are going to the ordered pair, positive one, negative five. In other words, down five units and one to the right. And from there, we'll use the slope of three. So down five units, one to the right. Down five units, one to the right. And from there, our slope is one, two, three over one. That is the graph of this function. Remember to email me if you have questions or respond via Google Classroom.